sort of coming towards the end of the season, sort of the crux, what would you say um, some of the season's been like so far? Um, definitely could do better, I think. Um, I think the main disappointment is the lack of excitement, really. It's just not been a, a memorable, memorable year. Um, after the back-to-back -back wins over Wigan and West Ham at the turn of the year, it looked like, yeah, they're going to be safe and they'll be cruising towards mid-table and who knows, maybe push for the top ten. Um, but after one point in 12, they just need to get over that 30-point barrier and then to get to 40 points. And uh, I don't think any fan will think they're safe yet. Yeah, like you say, I think they're only five points off the relegation zone and without, well, they've lost the last three without winning four. What mm. do you think sort of the pressure on the team there? For that? Yeah, I mean... the the worry is that you know, Martin O'Neill can say that they've played reasonably well in the last three games and only lost them by a single goal and probably shouldn't have lost any of them. But the fact is they have. You know, and, and losing is such a hard habit to, to shake off. This weekend, they've probably got as good a chance as any of bringing out of that because it's Fulham who've got a dreadful away record and they've only just sort of picked up a win themselves. But I think the fans are just getting a little bit nervous at the moment. Yeah, and do you think I know they've gone through spells like this before under O'Neill, but like you say, he's coming towards the end of the season now. Do you think there's a bit of unrest among the fans there? Or? I think the fans were probably expecting a bit more in what is Martin O'Neill's first full season um, because of the way that he started and you know, went off like a, an absolute train, changed the team round, quarterfinals of the of the FA Cup, on the verge of a, a trip to Wembley for the semi-finals, and then. The biggest disappointment, I think, is Sunderland fans so many times over the years have been built up to expect something and then it's all caved in again. And, of course, it probably doesn't help that it goes hand-in-hand hand with what looks like a, a pretty impressive Newcastle revival. And suddenly, from, from nowhere, being in relegation trouble, they're climbing out and are also in, you know, heading, heading towards the, the latter, end, latter stages of, of the Europa League. So that doesn't make things any easier. Obviously, we've just come out of the January transfer window not so long ago. They made a few signings there. What have you made of the new lads since they've come in? I think Danny Graham looks a, a, a decent player. Um, he, he's only played one game up front with, uh, with Stephen Fletcher, created a few chances. Um, you know, his goal-scoring record is, is pretty decent. Um, I think that will turn out to be, to be quite, a, quite a decent signing. Alfred and Dye, um, a little bit raw, nearly scored with his very first touch, and then every touch since then he's got further and further away from goal. But he's obviously given him, given him a lot of strength in midfield. Um, and you know, Kadamangan hasn't, we haven't seen anything of him. I think he played a reserve game the other night to get a, a bit of fitness. I think fans were looking for signings that would have had a bigger impact. And again, they will compare with Newcastle, who brought in you know, half a dozen players, of which two or three. I've just slotted straight in and looked very impressive. You mentioned Danny Graham there. Obviously, he's been playing up front with Stephen Fletcher the last few games in a 4 4 2. Do you think that's something that's definitely worth sticking with? I think it's something the fans have been asking for for a long time because we're talking about the lack of excitement. There hasn't been great, you know, many great attacking games at the Stadium of Light this season. Um, poor Stephen Fletcher at times, he must have been tearing his hair out, thinking, is he going to get the service? Um, at least with two up front, it eases the workload. Obviously, it makes it a little bit tougher in midfield. But the change of emphasis, I, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that he, he tried 4-4-2 in an away game and not uh, in a home game where you would expect it to be more natural attacking force anyway. Um, but I'll be interested to see how it develops. And just finally, where do you think some of them will end up then ultimately finishing this year? Hmm. <laughs> I don't think they'll go down. I think there are three worst teams. Um, and I think it is just as they've had this slump, mini slump, it is just as easy to, to pull out of it as well. But I can't really see them finishing much higher than about 15th, to be honest.